Hello there, fellow comic lovers. We are back again with yet another tutorial on doing your own grading. Now, last time we graded a copy of Batman number 174, and today we are doing another Batman, and this is number 168, 168, that was made in 1964. And you can already tell it's not in the best possible shape. So we're going to take a look at this. We're going to open it up. First of all, I'll tell you right now that the backing board is too small for this comic. The bag is too big. This is like a golden age bag. And then that's like a modern age backing board. So there's already a problem. It's because you should make sure that if you're going to have it bagged and boarded, that it conforms to the proper size of the book that you're dealing with. Now this one has already been defeated, the bag has been defeated, and what I mean by that is that the tape has been removed. You see the tape is actually right here. It's been peeled off and stuck down here so that there is no risk whatsoever of causing damage to the comic when the comic book is removed. Now what I'm going to do is give the backing board a gentle push on the bottom so that I don't affect the book. And then I'm going to take the backing board from the top and use that to slide the comic out. Now let's take a good look at this classic Silver Age DC Batman. And I'm going to use a second backing board. And as you've already figured out, I'm wearing white gloves. Now for this one, it's not really that necessary. I like to wear the white gloves because your hands are probably the worst thing that you can do to a vintage comic book. The oils from your fingers, no matter how clean your hands are, the oils from your fingers will affect this. You see people who work with antique books wearing white gloves. Why don't they do it with comic books? You're dealing with inks and acids. They never do it, but they should. I'm going to use a second backing board for maneuvering because this one's already in rough shape. It doesn't need to get any worse. There's the front. You can already see some damage here. And we'll take a look at the back. The cover is probably the most important thing in a lot of respects because it's like a portrait. It's the first thing that you see. And a lot of people are more interested in the covers sometimes than in the content. I'm going to very carefully open this up. It's kind of a weak edge here because we should go through every single page. We're looking for color consistency. As you can see, this is a little bit yellow. Not too bad, but it's a little yellow. But we're looking for consistency in color. We're looking to make sure that none of the pages are brittle or cracked or written in or damaged. Look at the original Lucky from Lucky Charms. He's changed a lot. We want to make sure that none of the ads have been cut out because that's very common with Gold and Silver Age books as things have been cut out of them. Like you might find that ad missing and that would really suck because you do want to be able to disclose any damage that's on the inside. Looking for loose pages, particularly in the center at the staple line. And you'd be surprised. I've even found books that have been graded where they missed something vital inside the book. I talked about that a little bit in the last tutorial. So far, so good. All the pages are here. They're all attached. And another vintage G.I. Joe advertisement with a mail off for it looks like the uh, Collector's Club. And I am a collector of vintage 60s and 70s G.I. Joes. 
Okay, so overall, I would call that interior color. You notice I didn't flip through it because a lot of times what they'll do is they say, curve your book and take the edge and flip through. How do you think it got this weakness right here? It's from people flipping. You don't need to make it any worse. And a lot of these people who do professional gradings, I think they do make the books worse simply by the way that they handle them. Now, like we talked about last time, what you're essentially doing is counting the points. You're going to carefully pay close attention, go around the comic, front and back, and you're going to count the damage. And this one obviously has some roll and it has a shredding right here on the A. Let me close that up for you in case you missed it. See that? And I bet you that that's from some tape that was on a bag once upon a time and it caught because when you open your flaps up on the bag, the tape will stick out this way. And when they pulled it out, it probably grabbed it and they couldn't salvage it. That happens frequently. That's why I don't like tape. So let's go around and count this up. Have a crease, a weak corner, that's two. For a little bit of a frayed edge, three. A chip, four. Frayed corner, five. A small tear, six. Small tear, seven. That shredding, eight. One, two folds, nine and ten. Two weak staples, eleven and twelve. Spine roll, thirteen. A weak corner, again, 14 with a little bit of shredding, right? A weak spine, I'm going to give it another one and call that 15. And then we're going to flip this over. A chip there, 16, another crease, 17, more damage to the back along the bottom here, 18, and then you're probably looking at about, that's not too bad, maybe a 7, a 6 or a 7, call it a 6. So 18 to 19 points of damage, which if you look at the grading guide, would put you at a solid good or a 3.0. At 3.0, according to Overstreet, this book would probably be worth about $25, which means that if you were to sell it, you'd probably get 15 to 20 could this be restored? It's not really dirty, but it does have a spine roll and you could get that pressed out, but you'd probably only recover this to a 3.5, maybe a four, if you wanted to invest in getting it restored. If you want to spend 20, $25 to get it flattened out and then another 25 or so to get it encapsulated, depending upon who you go with just to end up with a book that's worth about 30 <laughs> because uh, you're not looking at that much of a value difference going from a three to a three and a half or maybe a four with this particular book. It's not significant. It's not a key issue. It's just a regular Silver Age issue. It's still fun to read. It's a good read, but I would not invest in restoring or having this professionally graded and encapsulated. It's just not worth it. So you've got a solid good for a 3.0 rating. So really, it's just a matter of carefully counting the points. Count the points of damage and compare it to the scale. And this is effectively all that professional graders do 
And I've said this before, the difference between the professional grader and you is that they can do it a lot faster because it's all they do. And they have a piece of paper that says that they are professional graders. So I hope that you've found this helpful. If you have any questions, please go ahead and post them in the comment section down below. Any comments or suggestions, we'd love to see them. As always, please like, share, and subscribe. And thanks for watching.